funny. You meet a lot of things like we have. We've grown some. You know, I was showing some people some time back that um, when I was, when I was uh, much younger, there were some things that um, certain ministers said or did that I, I disagreed with. Because I didn't, know, I, I didn't know why they said so. But I didn't have the maturity to have known in the first place. But with my knowledge of God's word, I took a stand. But as I grew, I began to understand why they did those things, why they said those things. In some cases, even if I still disagree, now I don't think they were foolish. In other cases, I agreed with them. And I thought I must have been wrong in the way I thought. Why? Because the experiences of your life at a certain stage also affect the interpretation of God's word that you have. They affect your perspective. Are you listening? They affect your perspective. And that's why when we have programs like this, it's so important that you attend. Because we're able to present to you a perspective that you don't need to live in to get. You get it? Then you start understanding several things. Like maybe, like you read in the Bible, and you find in Book of Acts, chapter 6, that the day came when they needed some new leaders because they had a problem in the church, and so they elected to have certain deacons. And so the, the instruction was, look here among you and find honest men or men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom, and appoint them. And they looked around and found men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom. And they made them deacons. Well, what we don't have is the full story of all those deacons and how they performed. Some of them did well. Some of them didn't do well. I've read their stories. Now here's the, here's the important thing. When you look at it from that perspective and use that in making deacons, it's not enough. Because at, the, at chapter 6 of the book of Acts, it was still a baby church. So that would be like us many years ago when we used those same criteria to make deacons. As they journeyed on, there was more that was necessary. Same thing with us. As we have journeyed, we've discovered a lot more things. And so we change the standards, raise the standards, as it were and decide certain things will become necessary. And then you go back to the fundamental where he said those who are full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom. And then we say now, being full of the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you are prophesying. It means more than that. And you say, well, what's more? We say there's much more. And full of wisdom means much more than giving wise advice to the pastor at the close of the service like you used to do when you were in charge of the building committee. You get what I'm talking about? A lot more is necessary. Because as we journeyed on, we found deacons and deaconesses who we made deacons and deaconesses who fought the pastor years later. 
who resisted the church years later. But they were not always like that. They were humble and nice. And you thought they were always going to be that way. But as time went on, without the necessary training on the part of the leaders, us leaders, and also the necessary humility, because the more you grow, the more humble you should become. That's a sign of growth. If you're less humble, you're not growing. You still there? So, realizing that a lot more was necessary to have proper building because we need, imagine this, imagine this. You have been made a deacon. But we now hardly see you in church because you've got this, you know, so many things that take you out of church. Question is, all these other places that you go to, do you go to church there? Assuming that we have our churches in those places, do you go? Are you always seeking to be connected in a church? Several of the churches have the, program, the, the services streamed. Is your part of it? The excuse is allowed. And year after year, the excuse is allowed. Then missing meetings like this, and the excuse is allowed. And one day, he has a different idea. And the pastor is stunned. Same thing happens with pastors. Same thing. When pastors are made who should continue, because hardly would anyone be made a pastor who hasn't exhibited uh, some humility, some commitment, uh, and so on. Definitely. There were things that were evident before that man or woman was made a pastor. Positive things. But how were we watching when that pastor began to change? Not coming for the important meetings, especially those ones that are for prayer and fasting. If he's not given an opportunity to say something, he's not going to show up. Gradually, you look at his tithes and offerings, they're no longer coming in. He's beginning to take those things for granted. Okay, what about our reports? He's not submitting any report. Then the strain is beginning to come between him and the pastor. The strain is beginning to come. Pastor is not asking, where is your report? And he says, I'll bring it next week. And he doesn't bring it. The strain is beginning to come. He doesn't show up for the meetings. You look to the records, his ties are not there. Things are changing. Before long, there's a conflict between this pastor and his senior pastor. There's a conflict. And oftentimes, he will be the first one to report the matter to someone else. Something has offended him. That's a warning 
warning sign. You know what he's beginning to do? Have you ever, have you ever, did you, we, 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 we grew up having dogs in our house. A lot of times when we were raising them as they were young puppies, we kept them mostly inside and then took them out once in a while. But when they came out, they looked everywhere like this. They're trying to find, you know, they're locating somewhere they're going to begin to go. Then one day, he runs over there. And he comes back. The next time you let him lose, he goes over there. That's the place he has now known. Before he starts looking for the next place. So, when he starts making this trouble with the pastor, he's like that dog at the, at the door of the house looking like this. He's looking where to go now. And um, if nothing is done quickly, especially intercession, because now you got a job on your hands as a pastor, you now start praying. If you don't do that quickly, he'll jump out soon. He might become a stray dog. And it'll be difficult for him to become a better Christian anywhere else. You know why? Because the pride that drove him out will follow him. So everywhere he goes, he remembers he was a pastor or a deacon. It's going to be hard for him to submit himself. He has to first come to terms and say, where I'm coming from, they're not Christians. He has to say that. He has to lie. And so they trained us not to follow Jesus. In which case, he has to drop his title of pastor so-and-so, deacon so-and-so. It has to come to that. But it's difficult to come to that because he knows that it will not be true. So his title remains with him. How is he going to get humble and start afresh? In the place where he's gone. No, he would like to be introduced as pastor so and so, so he can start pastoring a church in six months or less. It's a big problem. And I say this for you to understand your personal growth is important in the house of God. Make no mistakes about it. Your personal growth is vital. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. Someone said, I never knew I would come to the point where I'll be fighting with my pastor. I never knew I'll come to that point. I said, you should have known. You should have known. If the pastor was telling you to attend the meetings you failed to attend, You argued with him. Why wouldn't you arrive there? The pastor, can you, can you send me to another church? No. I said, the pastor you are resisting is the pastor you need. Go back to him and humble yourself. And maybe I should, I should, I should pause there a little and say something about, about that. Mm. Just a, a, a few thoughts for us to understand how God thinks. Because there are a lot of people who don't know the way Paul said to them in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, he says, some of, have not the knowledge of God. He said, I speak that to your shame. There are a lot of people who don't have the knowledge of God. And God's word is so simple. The children of Israel were in Egypt under bondage, under servitude, under the whiplash of Pharaoh's taskmasters who maltreated them 400 years. Guess what? When God wanted to deliver them, he didn't say, get out, just, just go. No. He said, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. He's, he still had to obtain permission. 